perspective can be a challenging enough issue when our streets are nice and straight and our buildings all line up parallel or at right angles to each other. But it can be a bit more challenging when real life isn't like that. And here we have a street in Sydney that slopes downhill quite significantly. And I thought it was a reasonable example to look at what happens with perspective when the street goes downhill and just what are some of the challenges of drawing downhill streets, which, which I've got to say have always, i found, been the most challenging of streets to draw, that it's very hard to get a convincing downhill. But I've got a few tips in this and a few observations that I think might just make the difference for you when you need to next draw a downhill street. Now, the, the most obvious thing with this is the very tight perspective angles where this street is moving away from us at a fairly large angle. It's, it's almost perpendicular. So the angles become quite high and as the buildings get higher, the angles get higher and it is important to capture those accurately. And then, of course, we've got um, further down the street, we've got these trees, which unfortunately block the ground level line, but also some cars in the street. But there are some really, really important observations we'll make from those after we finish this drawing, which will just take a couple more minutes. I think in lots of ways, despite, despite the, the blockage of the actual line level down the far end of the street, there are some things here that just really, really explain, demonstrate well what happens, what we have to look out for. It is very counterintuitive what ends up happening when the street goes down and we draw it. And this is why it's such a problem, I think, for people and why it was such a problem for me until I came to realise these issues. Now, the foreshortening is really important as well here. These panels, sections in the wall narrow greatly, become narrower and narrower as the building moves further down the street. And you'll notice that I am just really drawing the effect of the detail. I'm not, not worried too much about whether the lines line up or join up or form right angles or whatever. I'm, I'm really just more concerned that the whenever perspective angles are formed are relatively close to what they should be, that they, they follow the fan pattern that, that we should establish and then maintain in our angles. I realised after I finished this that I forgot to put the, the electricity wires in and I also forgot to put the leaves in for this tree in the upper right corner but then it was just a really quick gestural drawing anyway so I can illustrate the perspective issues when we draw a downhill street. So with just a few more road level details done, a little bit of shadow and shade and we're ready. So here we have our downhill streetscape. But before I highlight the particular perspective issues with it, I think it's helpful just to clarify exactly how this is working with a simplified straight on look. So very approximately, this is what we're looking at if we look directly across the road. The most important question is, where is eye level? Because all of the perspective angles will converge on that line. And so that gives us a way of finding it. It's going to be where these angles converge. And we can see that's going to be about here. 
And if a person is this big, you can ask, well, how is eye level up here? And that's because the road kept sloping up and I was standing further up and we've zoomed in. So eye level becomes the straight line. There doesn't actually happen to be any architectural lines at this point in this scene. But below this, the angles increase and get quite increased down here. Now we can't see the road. And above this line, the angles increase the other direction. And we get this fan pattern that's so important to represent in our drawing. Now, if this were ground level, if this straight line here, this line here were the ground, it would make it very simple. This would be the ground. And then it would just be a standard perspective scene. But it's not the ground. The ground slopes down. So let me make a few observations. The first thing is that this is clearly a downhill line. Probably it's clearer in the photo than it is in my drawing. The thing about this downhill line is when we look at it, it actually goes uphill. And I think this is the source of much of the confusion when we draw. We assume that this line that's going downhill is actually going to go down when we actually have to draw it up. Certainly in this case, to have it sit right. And we can actually see that it goes downhill because we have these two lines here. And I'll just make them a bit darker which shows some horizontal lines at ground level. So ground level is here. So in fact, this angle is lower than ground level. And so it's lower than 180 degrees. So this line is definitely going down. But this is where careful observation is so important because sometimes what we need to draw is so counterintuitive. It's not what we would expect. And let's just look at this line of cars, for instance. So we have, we have a car parked here, it looks like. I guess the car's going to be on the right. And then we have lots more cars going down the street. And we can see that the street isn't straight. It actually starts to curve up at the other end. What we see is that basically the car tires of each car that goes further down the street end up being higher than the tires of the car before it. We can't go by the roofs of the cars because the cars are all different heights, but all of their tires sit on the ground. And so we can see that from the tires that right the way along, the tires of the car that's further down the hill is actually sitting above the tires of the car behind it further up the hill. And that when the road starts to actually curve up again, we can see that where the car tires line up on the road increases at a greater rate above the car before it. And so we do get this, this pattern, this bow shaped pattern, but it's the alignment of the car tires that's important more so than the roofs of the car. So we have eye level, we have eye level here, and we know that all of these lines meet on eye level and we can see that they do quite easily and they're all very easy to see angles. There are two things I think that cause the problems with trying to draw these scenes. One is what we've just observed, that the ground level of a downhill street doesn't necessarily go down. We certainly have to observe carefully. The second point is that we fail to realise that the windows and doors don't necessarily line up with each other, particularly at ground level, even in the one building, let alone from building to building. So in a normal street scene, we're often used to the doors on each shop, for instance, roughly lining up in a straight line on the perspective angle. But when we have a downhill street, that doesn't happen because this door goes to here. This door is down here. These windows are from here to here. These windows are from here to here. And so we don't get the alignment down the street of architectural elements 
Sometimes we might, so the bottom of these windows and these windows line up, but the tops actually don't line up. Let me just correct that. Now we have some very strong horizontal lines in the construction at the back of this shopping centre that make very clear these horizontal perspective angles and we have them here, here, here and here. And we need to be careful with the foreshortening that we foreshorten quite dramatically as we move down the street. But we have to realise that this street line has nothing to do with perspective. It has nothing to do with eye level or the fan shape pattern. It sits outside of that because it's not a line that's parallel to the horizontal lines in the architecture. And so to work out where we draw this, we need to observe it carefully. And we need to align what we've drawn accurately. And we need to make sure that we don't automatically line up details that don't actually line up in this street. And we realize that doors are going to be not in a straight line. That because the base of the door is getting lower and lower, so the top of the door will be getting lower as well. Now it works differently when the street's going uphill, but in some ways I think downhill streets are more of a challenge to draw. So if the ground were here, then the ground would be here and it would be much more straightforward. The difficult part is this section down here because the bottom line, this line, doesn't follow the perspective angles at all. And what I often see is that there's an attempt made to align all of these doors and windows as the street drops away, which means that we can end up with ridiculously small doorways closer to us and a few shots down the street, they're becoming ridiculously tall and narrow and all the proportions of the doors and the windows start to be distorted. And then we have problems if we're drawing people walking down the street because if we want to keep all the heads lined up with the first door, say here, then a person down here is going to be this tall. And so when we don't get this right, we get a lot of scale problems with pedestrians and with cars. I hope this has made sense. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I hope you have a go drawing this scene, particularly this upper part of it where we do get to draw the downhill part. Uphill, downhill can be a challenge, but in lots of ways, it comes down to careful observation. It's the presumptions that we make of how it's going to look that usually bring us to grief in our drawings. So if you want to have a go at this one, this reference will be on my channel community page. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.